We are in the study of 3rd John, 3rd John. Uh, I'm calling this particular one, it's a letter to Gaius about traveling teachers, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. If you need kind of a subtitle or a, or a topic for you to, to, to kind of go on. Uh, let's see, here we're moving this forward, and I'm moving this forward, and I turned it on, and it's not moving forward. And my technical guy is going to get back there and move it forward. I guess me punching on it probably doesn't help, does it? Oh, I turned it off. Did, is that me? Okay, I, did I do that or you do that? All right. Oh. Okay, okay, very good. All right. So next week we're going to look at Jude. We're, next week we're going to look at Jude. The following week, again, we're either going to start John or we're going to start Restoration Principles. I put a little thing back there last week, and the responses were just overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. There were five responses. Put a box, handed out cards, you know, five people turned something in. Five. So I guess that's y'all going to make me pick, because literally two of them were Two of them were John, two of them were Restoration Principles, and one of them said, I don't care. So, <laughs> I guess I'm going to pick. If you have a preference between those two, um, uh, let, me, let me know. Uh, we're eventually going to do both of them, um, but I'm just trying to give you all a little input into the, into the thing. So, let me know. Next week, uh, be sure to read Jude uh, before you come to class. It'll be really helpful um, if you've already a little familiar with what you're reading. And, and again, reading uh, 3 John and Jude both take all of, all of about probably seven to eight minutes at most. That's if you're really slow. Okay. This week's, uh, this week's lesson is brought to you by the Ladies' Retreat. We're going to have one of those coming up real soon. Uh, so if you're uh, inclined to that, be sure to pay attention to that. Those are real fun events for the ladies, so they tell me. I don't go to them. I'm not invited. Also, if you are not now uh, on a daily Bible reading schedule, there is one posted in the bulletin. I would encourage you to get on a daily Bible reading schedule uh, with, our, with our fun little, uh, nice little phones we have. I have an alarm set at 9.15 every day, and uh, it says, 9.15, daily Bible reading. And uh, even the people at work, where I work at, know that at 9.15, <laughs> it's time for my daily Bible reading, because that silly alarm comes up. And if you're not on a daily Bible reading schedule already, there are plenty of apps out there. We put one in the bulletin. Uh, you really need to get on one. Uh, it's really very easy to read through the Bible. It's really very easy to read through the Bible every year. It takes about 30 minutes a day uh, to read through the Bible in a year. Uh, even if you just want to read through the New Testament, that takes about 10 minutes a day. The Old Testament takes a long time, uh, is the extra 20 minutes. But, um, and there's all kind of different apps that you can do. Um, my particular app has one where you can read the life of Christ, or you can do uh, Psalms and Proverbs, or you can do whatever. Get on a daily Bible reading schedule. Yeah. It's better than watching whatever TV program you're watching. All right. Or whatever Netflix thing you're streaming for you kids over there. You kids. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, uh, if you are on uh, some cable channels, have this program in Search of the Lord's Way. It's a nice little program to get up uh, on Sunday morning and watch before you come into services. All right. So, let's take a look at our background here for uh, Third John. The author, of, obviously, is John. Uh, no doubt about it, and, and no controversy in any case at all about this one. It's interesting to me that uh, as he, in 1 John, he spoke to the, the large group, the entire, the entire group, the whole big kind of picture kind of thing. Uh, in 2 John, 
he was talking to a house church or a household, uh, probably within that, in that large group. And in 3 John, he talks to the individual. What's interesting is that uh, the themes from 1 John to 2 John to 3 John are all the same. Uh, he's dealing with false teachers. He's dealing with Gnosticism. He's, all those things that we talked about in 1 John, he dealt with in 2 John, and now he's dealing with in 3 John to an individual. Uh, that particular individual, and it didn't, it's not moving on me again. I'm not doing anything. I promise you I'm not. I, I, <laughs> I'm pushing the button. There we go. That particular individual is called Gaius. Uh, in the Bible, there are three Gaiuses. Gaius is the Mas there are three Gaiuses that are mentioned. Gaius of Macedonia is mentioned in Acts 19.9. Gaius of Derby is mentioned in Acts 20 and 4. And Gaius of Corinth is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1.14. We don't know who the Gaius is. It's not really that important for us to know. I'm just bringing it out to you and showing you the uh, the, the thing. There are three individuals named in this particular um, book uh, in 3 John. Uh, Gaius, Diotrephes, and Demetrius. Gaius, Diotrephes, and Demetrius. And, and we'll deal with that in just a moment. So, let's get to the text. Uh, 3 John, verse 1. The elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Verse 5. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers, who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Verse seven. Verse 7, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We, therefore, ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. We also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. I have many things to write, but I do not wish to write you with pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Now, um, first of all, what are some of your um, uh, impressions as you're, as you're hearing that letter to Gaius? Somebody has to have an impression. James is not here. Yeah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just shout. Don't, you don't raise your hand. Yeah. The, the value of the goodness, the, uh, the goodness over actions of others. Good. What else? What's that, James? Oh, yes. <laughs> Walking in truth. Walking in truth. How, remember from 1 John, how, that was one of our six words that we had to know. We, first of all, walking, right? We talked about that last, last week. In 2 John, walking, what does walk mean? How do we do what? If I'm walking in the light as he is in the light, what does that mean? What's that? How we, how, right, our conduct. It has nothing to do with the way I amble from point A to point B. It, what it is, is how, what my conduct is. 
how I'm living my life. Am I doing what God tells me to do? Am I walking in the light? Okay, so talks about that in 1 John, all right, the same way. That's one of the words we got to know. And then the truth, okay? Where is the truth? Who has the truth? God. God has the truth, right? Jesus has the truth. He gave it to his apostles. They have the truth, all right? So that's where the truth lies. The truth lies in them, in, in, in that. So where do we get our truth from? We get it from them. How do, how, do, how, do we, how do we get our truth today since we don't have apostles around? The Bible. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the... Come on, people. Word to God. Thank you. We ought, to, we ought to be able to shout that one out. If y'all don't, don't get anything from my class, y'all ought to shout that out. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How do we talk to God? Prayer. How does he talk to us? The word. No other way. All right? That's it. I, I, I can't, I'm not one of these TV preachers that go, God talked to me last night. No. Well, only if you read his word. That's the only way God talked to you. If you read his word. If you didn't read his word, he didn't talk to you. He didn't come down and go, hey, Cody, I need you to go tell these people to give you $100 and buy a plane. He didn't do any of that. All right? All right, talks through his, through his word. We talk to him through prayer. All right. And we can't know what the truth is if we don't look at the book. All right? We can't, we can't know what the, the truth is. All right? I used to be, well, not used to be, still am. Still horrible at math. I'm lousy. I passed Algebra 2 enough so I could get my little AA degree. Woohoo! Yay! All right? I had to take three math classes to get two, you know, two regulars. I was lousy at math. Well, one of the things was, I never did the homework. I never did, looked in the book. I was like, 2x plus, this is stupid. Nobody's going to do anything with this stuff. That's dumb. Well, guess what? It paid because I didn't know it. I'm not going to learn it if I don't ever look at it. I got I to gotta get in. So, I, so where the truth comes from is from... God's word. Okay. Then we'll deal with one of the one of the main issues is hospitality. How do we, how, how uh, he's dealing with other people? Um, Hebrews thirteen two says, "Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels." You may may remember from the Old Testament back in Leviticus, if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now I want you to keep that verse in mind as we, as we look at a couple of these verses here in a moment, all right, on how they're treating these, these uh, traveling uh, preachers. All right. All right. So again, to the elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and, in all, and be in health just as your soul prospers. To me, one of the things that sticks out to me about this letter is this is, this is a letter of, uh, d does, does he know Gaius? Does he know, does John know Gaius? Yeah, he knows him, right? If I write a letter to you and I know you, I'm going to, there's some personal things that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you, all right? Uh, we, it is, it's kind of one of the things that we do when we write letters now. Uh, we're like, dear so-and-so, you know. Um, it, if we're writing a, a, an actual letter or a card to somebody, all right. Um, at their time, that wasn't necessarily a, a standard greeting. But to the beloved, he calls him beloved. Remember how many affectations uh, John used in 1 John? To refer to the people? What's that? Yeah, brethren. What else he called them? Little children. All right. Young fathers. Aged men. He talked to all of them. And, and the idea was to talk to uh, not just one single group or one, one little small area, but to talk to everybody. In this, he, he's saying, hey, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to this guy. This guy's my buddy. This guy's my pal. 
right? On top of that, he says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, some get the indication that this might be, uh, you know, he might have had some health issues, but he might, he might just say, hey, I think, I hope things go well for you, not only health-wise, but everything else-wise, but more importantly, how your soul prospers. It, is it important how your health is doing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what's more important is what you're, what, what's going on with your soul. What's more important is what's going on with your soul. Uh, I will tell you that I am looking at, at one of the things that I've been doing for this restoration principles class that I said I, I will eventually teach is I'm looking at some of the old time preachers uh, from the 1800s. And one of the things that they, that they absolutely uh, blows my mind, that they absolutely had a, 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 an idea of was that your soul, the soul, your soul was most important of anything else in, in, in the whole world. They put that above everything else. This one particular preacher was at a gospel meeting and you have to remember this is, this is a time before the 1800s and this is a time before uh, electricity and cars and all that stuff. Uh, he had to ride 20 miles on a buckboard to get a message to his wife because he had just found out that his son had passed away. His six-year-old son had passed away. Now this is going to sound cold to you, but I want you to listen to the whole thing. So he, he, he dry, rides 20 miles on, 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 a, on a buckboard uh, wagon to, to get to this place to send a, a message to his wife. And it's a gorgeous, beautiful message. And he says, sweetie, I, I, the basic, the intent of the message is I, I, I love you I love my son but right now I can't do anything about that but there are some souls back here that I need to save I, ne I need to be a part of I need to be a part of saving and he, then he rides 20 miles back to get to the church in times for him to preach and he preaches and, and four people are converted because he cared about their souls. God cares about your soul more than anything else. God wants you to be, God wants your soul to be okay. All right? I, I always think about prosperity when I, talk, I think about prosperity preachers. I always think about uh, the Apostle Paul and all that he went through, the shipwrecks, the beatings, and, and I would love Paul to run into one of these prosperity preachers and just say yeah, you have no clue what this is really about God's more concerned about your soul than anything else alright All right. he says for I rejoice greatly brethren when they when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth as, as we noted in 2nd John that there were reports coming back to John that says hey Gaius has got it going on this guy is is, is is towing the line. This guy is, is, is doing what, you, what he's been told to do. Remember, in 2 John, he said, I'm happy to hear that some of your children are doing the right thing. Okay? Same here, just as you walk in the truth. Four, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. All right? How was, how was <clears throat> Gaius, or this place here, um, why did John consider them his children? Okay, because we're children of God. That's one way, of course. Good. What else? What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part of it was because if, if you've ever been if you've ever helped somebody see Jesus, if you've ever helped somebody uh, get from point A to point B, they were struggling with something. Now, now you help them and now they're not having that spiritual problem anymore. Or you help them get to be converted. You feel like, you, in, in a way, you feel like, 
you're a part of me now, you know? You're, 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 it's almost like you're one of mine, you know? Yeah, I didn't give birth to you or anything, but spiritually, you're my children, okay? And, and if you've ever, ever, I know this doesn't happen for everybody, but uh, for those of us who are blessed enough to be able to, to teach class and to, uh, and to preach at certain places, I'm going to tell you, sometimes going back and seeing the growth there in that particular place, you, I mean, you don't, you don't take responsibility for it, but you feel proud that you were just a little part of that, that you, that you aided those people along, okay? Right. It, again, not like a 1 Corinthians 1 situation where, you know, you divide up on that, but you're just happy that you're, you were part of the process. You were part of the process. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. All right. Verse 5. Here it comes. It's a coming. Verse 5. <laughs> there we go. Okay, beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers. All right? These folks, the guy is who he's talking to, he says, you, when, when somebody comes by, you, you know you're helping them out. When the brethren come by, you're helping them out. All right? All right? Who have borne witness of your love before the church, if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. You have to remember uh, that these are, uh, that word send you forward was always, is always connected with kind of a, a financial thing, okay? Remember, you have to remember, this is a time when if, if I go to a place, if I go to Ephesus, and I'm from Galatia, first of all, there's no 7-Elevens, there's no speedways, all right? I got to plan my trip out, I got to think about my journey back, and I got to think about where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to eat, all along the way, all right? And now I get there, and I meet with the congregation there, and, 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 and these people accept me in, and, the, and they love me, and they're, and, and they're praying for me. And they say, oh, by the way, let us help you out as you go along your way. All right? Can we still do that today? Yeah, we can still do that today. Do we got to be cautious? Yeah, yeah. God, God wants us to have good judgment, you know? But, but we can still do that. All right. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 11 through 14, he says, If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? If others have the right to support, uh, right of support from you, shouldn't we have all the more? But we do not use this right. On the contrary, we put up anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple get their fruit from the temple, and that those who serve at the altar sharing what is offered on the altar. In the same way, the Lord has commanded those who preach the gospel should receive the living from the gospel. So, uh, going back to John. John, uh, is talking to guys here, says, I'm getting good reports from you guys. I'm getting reports from you guys that you guys are walking in the truth. Not only are you walking in the truth, but you're helping those people out that come along. Okay? So, the Paul says the same thing. He says, look, I shouldn't have to beg from people because I'm preaching the gospel, okay? But in, in Corinthians, he says, I'm not taking anything from you guys because I don't want it to be a hindrance, all right? But just so you know, that's the way it was in the Old Testament, right? You remember the Old Testament? When we looked at the Old Testament, how, how did the priests get paid? How did the priest? How did the priest eat? Yeah, in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament. The yeah, Levi. All the other tribes contributed to pay Levi. Yeah, the Levites didn't have any land. So when they brought some of their sacrifices, remember, some of the sacrifices went to sin. Some of them went to this, and part of it, every now and then, a part of it went over here to the priest. Right. Guess who get to eat that? The priest. All right? What, happens when, what happened when they weren't doing that? 
Yeah, they didn't eat. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's pretty simple, right? They didn't eat. Right? When they started not paying attention to God, when they, when they got away from uh, that kind of stuff, the priests suffered because they, 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 didn't, they didn't bring their sacrifices to God and because of that they didn't eat. Okay? So you see kind of the, the history offer. It says, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. Now, uh, again, I, I want to show a couple of things here and, and show how John is kind of looking at the, the, a Jewish past here. So kind of three influences. That went forth, of course, is always kind of connected to financial help. help. He says, in his name's sake. Uh, if you remember, Jews did not use God's name. They were very, very cautious about using God's name. Or put, even writing it down. Anybody know what the preferred word was? Yeah. The, the word that we get from Jehovah is, uh, they would put that in. And, and most of the time when the readers got there, they wouldn't even say that. They would say Adonai, or they would, uh, the, because they were very cautious about the idea of blaspheming God's name. And I almost laugh about that a little bit because we have become so, we have become such a blasphemous nation when it comes to blaspheming God's name or blaspheming Christ's name. We throw that around. We as a nation throw that around. And I'm, I'm, uh, sometimes we got to be, we, we ourselves got to be a little careful about that. Because we throw that around like uh, way, way too easy. There's not a whole lot of reverence put under that. I can't tell you, I've told you before, I, I, I will not watch a program, I will not listen to a program if they start using God's name in vain. I can't do it. I can't. If, or if they use Jesus as a cuss word, it's just so, and it's so prevalent today. It's so prevalent. To blaspheme the name of God. To blaspheme the name of Jesus. He does, and John is from that tradition and he's so careful about that that he says, from his name's sake. They know who he's talking about. They know he's talking about Jesus. But he's so, so, he's so reverent of that that he's, 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 he says his name's sake. And I just find that interesting to me. Uh, and from the Gentiles, meaning the non-converted folks. Going back, so he says, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. So look, he said, I'm going. I, these people are coming there. Uh, they're, 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 they're not taking anything from the non-converted people. All right? If I'm preaching at a particular place, and, and, and the place is, Big enough, we'll say big enough, that um, it should be able to support me. If I'm preaching there, is it a little embarrassing if I have to go out and get a job just to make ends meet? I'm going to shake your head. I'm going to shake my head and say yes. All right? Now, different preachers have different ideas on that, and, and different folks have some ideas on that, but it seems to me that if a, a laborer is worthy of his hire. Now, some congregations I've been at, we've had 50, 60, 70 people, and they couldn't support a, a local preacher. But at the point that, you, um, that you're able to support a local preacher, you should, you, you, you should do that. I preached at a congregation one time that was a, uh, 70 people. I preached there for a year in Whitehall, Arkansas. And uh, the... The elders came to me and said, Cody, we, we want you to be the preacher. And I said, okay, fine. And uh, he said, uh, and we're going to pay you $50 a month. And I said, okay, that's fine. And $50 a month didn't seem like a much. But 
they, they wanted me to know and they wanted the congregation to know that, look, you might say the labor was worth even higher. I was only worth 50 bucks. But, <laughs> but they, wanted, they wanted the people to know that, that look, we need to pay the folks that are, that are, that are teaching, uh, that are preaching for us, that are doing the job. So uh, you see that a little bit here. All right, verse 8. And we're, there we go. Verse 8. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Fellow workers for the truth. We talked about this a little bit in, in 2 John. If I'm, if I'm, um, if I'm helping Josh Dykes out, is that, am, am, I, am I being, am I helping out a little bit for the folks in Josh Romania? Yeah, yeah. I'm part of that effort. I'm part of that effort because I'm helping. He's now, I, I, I'm a fellow worker. I may not be putting as much in, but I'm a fellow worker. Okay. I wrote to the church about Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among, among them, does not receive us. He said, look, I also wrote to the church, but this guy Diotrephes, he's a big shot. And, and he's not receiving these, these people that come in. In fact, verse 10 says, Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does re not receive the brethren, forbids those who wish to, wish to, putting them out of the church. Do you see a problem here? Anybody? Somebody say we have a problem. We got a problem, right? I see it as an opportunity. Okay. An opportunity. Uh, <laughs> have you been talking to my manager? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yeah, so so not only is so so not only is, so he's he's first of all saying, hey, I'm in control. Not only is he 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 talking bad about John. That's what that word pratting means. Okay, um, uh, he's talking about. Notice John's talking about his deeds here. Not only he's he's using malicious words. He's pratting, talking foolishly. Okay, he doesn't receive these preachers when they come in. Not only that, if you decide to receive him, he's going to kick you out. Now, in our day and terms, we call this guy a bully. Okay? Because Donna invites this, the preacher comes in, and Donna, and, and this guy says, uh, you know, I, I come from John, and, and John says to tell you hi, and Donna says, well, great, let's go have dinner. And Demetrius comes over here and says, you go have dinner with that guy, and you're out of the church. Whoa! Hold on. Now, going back to going back to First John. Going back to First John. Does that sound like someone who has the love of God in his heart? Does that sound like someone who 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 is is standing by the truth? No. John says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil. John calls it what it is, evil. But what is good? He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. He goes, you're going to act that way? You, you know, you, if you've got to be big man on campus, if you've got to be top dog every time, and I've got, I got to rule the roost, well, guess what? Yeah, that's evil. John calls it what it is, evil. Evil. If you've got to have your way all the time, that's evil. Evil. And, and, and John says, don't imitate that. Don't imitate that. Go ahead. How does any bully do it? I, oh, I... I, I 
I have a strong feeling he was an elder too, but I have a, I, but, but I think he's like any bully who talks bad about people. And say it again. Yeah. So, so Donna's over here. So I'm just going. Did you see what that Donna did? I told her. Yeah, she ought not to listen to that guy. That guy's a nutcase. So he's that old Don over there. And then I'll come over here and like, did you hear what them people talk about? I told Don not to do that. I know that. And next thing you know, everybody's like, oh, there's Don. I'm not going to, you know. Right? You ever been in a situation like that? Where you, and, and then, and you don't come to church for conflict. Right? Right? You don't come to church so you're like, boy, oh boy, I just love the conflict. No, no. I come because there's conflict out in the world. I don't want that conflict. I come to church because I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. And because I, I, I'm excited to see people like me fighting the battle every day. I don't want the conflict. I got enough drama out there. So I don't want drama in, in the church. And here's Odotropies. Yeah, probably an elder. And probably creating a bunch of drama. So much so that you're like, Phew, you know what? I'm done. I, I, I just, you know, I'm going to stay at home. I didn't have live stream. I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to do something else. Verse 12. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness that you know that our testimony is true. Just in case anybody says, John... Well, who is good? This Demetrius guy. He's got a good testimony. All right? Everybody that bears witness to this guy says he's walking, like, walking, conducting himself like he should be. All right? And you know, John says, you know me. I'm, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you a lie. This is the truth. All right? So he's got me. Just like in verse, uh, just like in Second John, he says, "I have many things to write to you, but I, I do not wish to write you with pen and ink." Now, if you're Gaius and you receive this letter, and and, and this is one of the things I, I, that I that I think I think we can learn a lot from, if you're Gaius and you receive this letter, one of the things you realize is, okay, this Diotrephes, evil. Demetrius, good, okay? John made his point, right? John let us know. John let us know what was going on. Now, he didn't write a 15-page letter on how bad Diotrephes was. It took about a sentence and a half, right? And he said, look, I got other things to tell you. I got other things to tell you. But, I, but, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I, don't, I don't wish to write you with pen and ink. In fact, I hope to see you shortly and we still speak face to face. I, I, I'd, I'd much rather come to you and just talk to you about this. I'm writing this letter so you know how I feel about this situation. You know how I feel about this particular thing. All right? I'm not going to blast you on Facebook. Right? I'm not going to kill you on social media. I'm going to actually talk to you face to face. All right? Too many times I think, yeah, we do too much on social media. All right, enough of that. Um, but, it, but he says, I'm going to talk to you face to face. All right? He said, I tried to write a letter to Diotrephes. It's not working. So I'm going to go talk to him too. He mentioned that earlier. When he, when he gets there, he's going to talk to Diotrephes also. All right? Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Any comments? Yes, sir. Greetings, friends, by name. So, again, a personal letter. So, uh, if I'm familiar with Gaius, then I say uh, you know, whatever his wife, Gaius, his wife's name was, and, and uh, you know, whoever, whoever was in Gaius' little circle. Good question. Uh, and again, that shows the personal, the personal aspect of the letter, you know. Just like you'd say, hey, you know, say hi to Bob and Sue and Carol and Jim and 
in uh, Paul's, Paul's letter, Paul names them. And, and, and I always appreciate the fact, the fact that the Holy Spirit included that in there because I, I just am reminded that there were people like you and me uh, who struggled with regular stuff, had jobs and wives and kids and all those things, and we're still trying to do God's work. We're still trying to live their life like God told them to. So, yeah. Anything else? Okay. Remember, next week, Jude. Next week is Jude. Uh, after that, again, either restoration principles or, or John. I'm leaning toward restoration principles right now, but if you have a preference, please, I have time to be swayed. Very little time remaining. Tick, 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 tick. The clock is ticking. All right, may God continue to bless you in your studies. Thank you.